if I'm going for the trophy bass, I'm going to concentrate on saguaro and canyon. Lake Pleasant is probably my least favorite lake to fish, except for stripers. When the stripers are spawning, I love those because they taste good and they get big and they pull you. Those are fun. But for bass fishing, I kind of I kind of steer away from the pleasant. Bass fishing is kind of declined there. I mean, it's getting better. It's getting better. But Apache is a one of my. That's kind of a favorite lake too because it's just harder to get to. But you have the opportunity to catch more smallmouth there, which are just so much fun to catch. So much fun. They're the just fighters. And it's a beautiful lake. I mean, all the lakes are beautiful, but Apache and Canyon for beauty is just amazing, amazing. Yes, sir. What if your opportunity to fish these lakes is uh, November through March? You're here in the winter. Uh huh. How, how is the fishing then when the water temperature is late? Fishing's good, but you got to go deeper. You got to go deeper. And actually, I love wintertime fishing. I don't catch as much, but the lakes are empty. I have the lake to myself pretty much. There's no wakeboarders out there. Well, maybe every now and then you can some strange people in wetsuits out there skiing. But for the most part, it's pretty calm. I love wintertime fishing, especially on a kayak. You're not out there, you know, June in, at Saguaro in the midday, it's a washing tub machine out there. It's, it's crazy. And I just stay away from it. Electronics are more important when you go deeper. Definitely, definitely electronics are more, more important. We did a uh, tournament at Bartlett and um, I focused on 45 foot and deeper for my bass. I spooned a bass from 60 foot and I caught two others that I brought to the scales that were actually in night. Okay, they weren't in 90 foot of water. They were in 90 foot of water, but they were suspended down about 40, 45 foot. Long line and the deep crankbait got me those two. Everybody else was fishing the shoreline. They came in with a bunch of dinks. They caught fish, but they were smaller than mine. I knew to go deeper for the bigger ones at that time. So if you're fishing for bass in the winter, definitely deeper is the key. Spoons and, and things like that, deeper cranks, swim baits, things you can get down in deeper water. Right now, shallow, 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 shallow. They are all shallow right now. Apache's a little behind some of the other ones because the water's a little colder there. But you go to Saguaro right now, you'll be amazed at what's in two foot of water, five foot of water, eight foot of water. It's just full of fish. Drive you nuts because you can't catch half of them. Well, you can't catch a tenth of them because they're all busy doing their thing right now. So it's kind of hard, but they're all shallow. And they're going to be that way for a while. So if you can get out now, <laughs> or you got some sick time, Use it. Use it. Any other questions? No? You didn't save me any ice cream. Man. What's... Man. All right. You mentioned safety stuff. Water. Water? Lots of water. Lots of water, yes. That's, that's true. I, I, used to, I used to do flag football. I used to coach flag football. And I used to tell those kids, all right, we got a game Saturday. Thursday, I used to tell the kids and the parents, well, I had to tell the parents too. Definitely the parents more than the kids. Prehydrate, bring lots of water, bring lots of water with you. I actually care, I actually keep a couple of spare water bottles just in the front that I just don't ever use because in case something happens, I get stuck somewhere, at least I got a couple more in there. They may be warm, but they're water. In fact, for Christmas this year, my lovely wife bought me a life straw. <laughs> In case something really bad happened, I can go sucking in some lake water. Hopefully, I don't have to use that. Any other questions? Are you mostly using robo worm right now? For fishing? Yeah, mostly robo worm right now. Actually, uh, I, use, uh, I do use robo worm. I love my cactus wren worms. They make some awesome worms. I just gave you a pack. Super soft. This is one of my favorite colors right here. Scorpion. Love these worms. They work great for drop shotting or shaky heads. Awesome worms. Good question. Any other questions? No? I know when I fish on my kayak, I got a fly fishing bag that sits right here. Yep. Yeah, and that's what I just keep everything in. Because I fish in a, you know, it's a 
sit in. So right. I don't have access to everything. That right. You do, so I just have to have it all right here. Yes, I'm a little spoiled being in something like this, but the most important thing that I could leave you with is going fishing is more about the going than it is the fishing. And to get off the bank is even another bonus. So whether it's in a flow tube, a sup, or kayak, whatever, get that initial investment in there. You know, and you want to become a better fisherman, the, the, the key to becoming a better fisherman is time on the water, which I wasn't getting in a boat. Just couldn't afford to take it out as much. So you want to become a better fisherman, you gotta get off the bank, you gotta get out there in something, whether it's a kayak or float tube, a sup, a pon one man pontoon. I, you know, you have one of those dinosaur floaty pool tubes. I, I don't care. Just, just get out there and have fun. Get out there and have fun. That's, that's, the, that's the joy of being in Arizona and being anywhere. But in Arizona, you can pretty much get out all, all year long. I mean, yes, in the winter, I bundle up a little more. But um, it's, you know, it's still sunny in December. And, and uh, it's, it's just awesome. It's awesome. There's just no... Um, no replacing, you know, getting out, getting out there and making the memories. So, you know, just enjoy yourselves. All right. What else can I talk about? Um, let me let me wrap this up with the community, kayaking community, or, or in general. So, like I said, there's there's YouTube, there's forums, there's internet forums. There's a lot a lot of helpful people out there that can answer your questions about kayak fishing or, or kayaking in general. Feel free to do, just you know do, do some Google searches. Like I said again, there's the Arizona. If you're on Facebook. There's the Arizona Motorless and Kayak Facebook group. Great bunch of guys that, that run that, some of my friends. Uh, some of those friends are also with me on the Heroes on the Water. So if you guys are, if you, if you know some veterans or you're veterans yourself, thank you for your service. You can work with me and, and through that Facebook group, uh, Arizona Chapter Heroes on the Waters, we take veterans out kayak fishing. So they just have to show up, we feed them, we put them in kayaks, give them rods and reels. They just have to show up and have fun. So it's a good way to decompress for those vets. So if you know any vets or you are a vet, thank you. Feel free to hit me up afterwards. I can give you some more information about that. Beyond that, what's some of the things you can come up to maybe possibly demo some kayaks? So Paddle Fest happens every year at Lake Pleasant. Um, it's in Fireman's Cove, and I believe it's April 9th. You can look it up on the Lake Pleasant website. But there'll be a Paddle Fest. It's basically just a two-day kind of kayak water sports party going on in Fireman's Cove. I'm actually running a little fishing derby that Saturday morning. If you're interested in that, we can talk later. But if you want to go out there, there'll be a lot of kayaks for you to demo. Stand up paddle boards, different vendors. Feel free to come on out and have a good time. So Lake Pleasant Paddle Fest, April 9th. There's also an introductory into kayaking at Ben Avery through the Arizona Game and Fish. Ben Avery is the shooting range out by Lake Pleasant. And that is, I think it's April 2nd and 3rd. April 2nd and 3rd, they're going to have a little pond there. It's not a lake or anything out there, but there's a little pond if you want to get into a kayak and just, you know, check it, check some stability. It's not like it's going to be a lot of vendors or anything. I, I don't know what the kayaks are going to be like, but another, another way to get out and test some. Meetup, meetup, meetup.com. There's some local paddling groups there that you can go out with other people, be more safe. Um, if you're into kayak fishing heavily and you have that competitive side, you want to get there. Are some uh, we have some local tournaments through the Total Bass Addicts. Contact them, look at their webpage. We have tournaments in the fall and, and spring that are about once a month and we vary from lake to lake. We just had one last week at Apache. We're having the championship again in Apache on April 2nd. But uh, starting here, I believe in May, Justin? May. In May, we're going to do uh, Saguaro Summer Nights. So we're going to have tournaments, I believe, twice a month on Friday nights, launching out of Butcher Jones. If you're interested in that, you can talk to Justin afterwards or myself. We'll get you set up there, get you some info. Total Bass Addicts. If you go to their website, it's mainly geared toward the to the bass boats because that's that's where the series started. But there is a motorless section. However, I'm afraid they don't update it as often as they like. So, but you'll get the idea. You'll get some contact numbers there, 
and I believe the schedule is is up there on the website. And even if you um, even if you don't feel like putting the money into it right now, as far as the competitive side, if you just want to come out and see how it's done, feel free to come out and talk to us. You know, fish with us while we're out there in the tournament. That's fine. Just stay off my spot. But <laughs> you follow the other guys around or women. Don't follow me. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm pretty. I'm pretty generous. I'm pretty generous. Uh, let's see what else. So we talked about the internet. YouTube again is a great place to find out about rigging and how to do things. Yeah, I'm sorry. I've forgotten safety. One of the most important safety rules there is. Have a float plan. I'm sorry. I forgot this. This is key, especially if you're going out by yourself. Tell somebody where you're going how you're getting there, you know, what roads you're taking, if it happens to have multiple roads, what lake, where you're launching from, and what time you plan on being home. Because God forbid if something did happen, we want to give the sheriff's department or your loved ones an idea of where to look. People, people do get hurt, boats, kayaks, accidents happen. So share your float plan with somebody, especially if you're going out by yourself. If you're going out with a group and you're gonna get sec you know, separated, it's a good thing to have the little radios too, as well, little waterproof radios. All right, so I'm going to wrap this up. I appreciate your attendance today and listening to me jibber jabber all along about kayak fishing. I'm going to be around a little bit. Matt Schur is going to be up here in a little bit in the next segment, and he's going to attack these fish up here. So, great fisherman. Definitely uh, good to hear some of the stuff he has to say. But I appreciate your time. Thank you for coming. Again, my name is Brian Sefci. You can look up my YouTube channel, it's AZ Kayak Fisherman. A very, very small channel, but there are a few videos out there. But uh, I appreciate you coming and giving me your attendance today and your time. If you have any questions, feel free to come see me afterwards. But I'll leave you with, you know, make sure, you know, just get out, go fishing, enjoy that going, enjoy nature, just get out there and, and have some fun. Thank you. <laughs>